Hey everybody, it's Doug Fink. Going to step through a few things here today in this video. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP since 2009. I focus primarily on PowerShell. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about Azure Data Studio, specifically PowerShell Notebooks. And I've written a PowerShell Notebook module which lets you automate PowerShell Notebooks with PowerShell. We're going to focus in on convert Markdown to Notebook. We'll talk a little bit about Markdown, a little about how to do this, show you how the watch parameter works on that function. We'll see what other functions are available in, the, in that uh, PowerShell Notebook module. And we'll try out the Invoke PowerShell Notebook, showing also the As Excel and the Show parameters. So let's get started. So this is the Azure Data Studio. You can Google for it, Google for Azure Data Studio install, download it, install it. It's based on the Visual Studio Code editor. Uh, and it's been customized for things like PowerShell Notebooks, Jupyter Notebooks, Python Notebooks, SQL Interactions, Azure Data uh, SQL Interactions as well. And so let's take a look at how this notebook is and set up. Simple. You click File, New Notebook. When it comes up, it defaults to SQL. So you can use this as an interactive SQL uh, component. You can choose one of these other languages. Here I'm going to choose PowerShell. And what I can do here is click on code and I get a box. This is like a power, single power. This is a PowerShell console or run space. And I can type in any PowerShell here that I want. For example, we'll just we'll calculate one plus one, run it. And it gives me the, the number two. It's like as if I typed at the PowerShell console one plus one. I can add another code window and I can do a range, for example, one dot dot five and instead of clicking on the button I can also press F5 to execute this. So I can pretty much choose any PowerShell command that I'd like. So if I want to add another code window I can type in something like PS you know and select and notice you I'm getting some completion. I can say select the first um, 10 F5 and you can see the first five processes running on my machine. What else you can do here is you can clear the results and then you can run the cells again and it'll execute all the different ones you have in this particular notebook. What's nice about this is you can hit file and then I can save it and then it'll create what they call an IPNYB file and you can then take that and then pass it around to colleagues and friends or put it up in GitHub and people can download it and they can see these different code blocks that you've set up. Maybe it's a set of instructions, uh, how to execute certain types of things to do some teaching. And they can do interactive learning and they can run them and see what happens on their systems. And that's just one of many scenarios that you can do. So given that, um, let's go on. I'm going to close this out, show you what the PowerShell module I have, what it does. So I've created something here called uh, demo MD, which is a markdown file. Markdown files are pretty simple. So for example, I can come in here and say um, chapter one. And what's nice is if I press F1, I get the command palette and I can search for different things I can do within the editing environment. And what I want to do here is open up the preview to the side. So what that does is actually connects to this MD file and then it renders it in HTML. Markdown's nice because I can do things like I can put a pound sign in and notice on the right hand side I get a nice chapter with an underline with it. That's basically a HTML heading one. Um, I can do something like subchapter, put two hash signs and you can see it's going to change the font for me. Other things you can do in Markdown is you can say hyphen item one. Notice I get a bullet and now I can get a list of bullet items rather than actually doing the HTML. I can take this shortcut. You can also do things like item X, just number them one, and then the renderer will actually say, oh, you want a list of items that are numbered. It'll handle one through X that you're trying to number. You can also do things in Markdown. You can actually include um, HTML. So if I wanted, I can put an unordered list, and if I do an LI, item Y, we can take a look and see X and then Z. So you can do all kinds of things with, with Markdown. This is great for readmes on GitHub. This is great for anything that takes in a, um, 
a markdown and that can render it. So it's much easier to work. I find it much easier to work with this than to work with the actual HTML. So let's take a look at what else this can do. So given that I'm working with um, markdown, I decided, well, what if we actually built something that could read a markdown file and then convert it into a PowerShell notebook that be, can be run inside of Azure Data Studio. So if you go up uh, and do PowerShell notebook and pull this down from the gallery, okay, and we can do a get command module. Also notice I'm working with a integrated PowerShell console inside of the Azure Data Studio. Super cool, really helpful. So here's a bunch of functions that I built. What we want to focus in on is convert Markdown to Notebook, and we'll later on look at Invoke PowerShell Notebook. But first off, let's try convert Power convert Markdown to Notebook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that command. It takes a file name. We're going to point it at demo MD. I'm going to run it. It says converting, and it says finished. And it created a demo.ipny IPYNB file. We can actually open that inside of um, Azure Data Studio and it'll become an interactive notebook for us. First, you can type in chapter start. You need this. Type in control KU, makes it a comment, and I can do a chapter end. What you need here is what they call fence blocks, code fence blocks. And you denote those by putting them three back ticks. And then we can put a piece of uh, PowerShell in here like we did before, like five plus three. You need to tell it what format it is, PS. And if I bring back up the preview, notice this is colored green. If I take off the PS, there's no colorization. So Markdown has this capability where you use code blocks, code fence blocks, and if you tell it what language it is, like you can do C sharp, if you have C sharp in here, um, it will also try to colorize, syntax colorize that for you in the output. So this is great. So now we have a chapter start. We have a piece of PowerShell defined here. If I hit control save, and then I can do the conversion again. What I'll do now is I'll say PS edit. And let's see if we can open up that demo, get rid of the uh, preview. And as you can see, not only does it have our code in there, but it also has executed it. Now, the interactive notebook has not done that. Actually, the convert does it. It will actually execute the PowerShell code for you and include it in the output of the notebook. Also, notice we get a chapter one. This is in Markdown. So if I double click that, you can see this is Markdown. So the convert reads this, reads a chapter start, converts anything that's not in a, an offense block into, uses it as markdown, and then takes this and converts it into a code block for the interactive notebook. So I can do something like this. This is addition. We'll use another notation that markdown knows. And let's do another one. Let's do division. And we'll do something like 10 divided by 3. We'll save it. Now, every time I come down here, I can use the convert, but that gets tedious. So there's a watch um, switch on it. It'll sit. It'll wait for any changes to this file. And when it finds a change, it will actually then compile it. Come back here. We'll close this and reopen it. And then you can see here's our division. And here's our addition. Notice the highlighting of the word addition and division. Let's close this out. We'll add one more piece. Let's do a modulo. Modulo. And we'll put that code in here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to hit the Control S button for save and then watch the bottom PowerShell window. And the module picks up that it was changed and then converts it for us. We'll reopen up that file. We can click File recent oh, reopen the closed editor and when we scroll down we can see now that that new code block and the new 
uh, markdown is there as well as the, the actual result. This is, I find, super helpful in, on a few ways. It helps you repurpose markdown. So typically when I have a GitHub project, I like to keep all my documentation in markdown, which can then get rendered on my repo, on my GitHub repo. But now I have a way that I can actually lay that out and then convert it directly into an interactive notebook ready for use in Azure Data Studio. So it saves me time and energy. It's, I find it much easier and much quicker to actually type up straight out text this way rather than creating, sitting here and then creating you know, code blocks and then adding text blocks and doing all this kind of editing in this window. Although this is great for that kind of quick work, but if I'm going to do something larger long term, I prefer to do it this way and then do the conversion. So let's close this out and see what else we have. So that's a quick round of seeing PowerShell notebooks, a little bit of the Azure inside the Azure Data Studio. We can see uh, the demo MDB. Let's break out of, um, actually, well, we can do one more thing. Let's uh, copy this. I'm not going to put any text around. I'm going to do a PS, and I'm going to say select first 10, and I'm just going to select company. Uh, name and handles. We save that, converts it, let's reopen that, and then at the bottom we should see, yes, we have that particular piece of code and the results. Again, we can clear all the results. I can just run the last one for now, see how it looks. Looks great. So now my MDB is where I want it. It's been converted into a Python, sorry, a PowerShell notebook. Let's break out of this. See if we can get back to what other functions are in here. There's something called Invoke PowerShell Notebook, which is kind of cool. Let's make this a little bigger. So I can do that. The, the full name of the notebook is going to be the... Now, what just happened there is, it, is this function actually cracks open the PowerShell Notebook and then executes each one of those lines and dumps it back out to the console. So you can actually interact any way you'd like with it. You can either have it dump it out, or you can capture this. It puts it in an array. You can step through. If you know that you want code blocks 7 and 15, you can just go after those and get the results. And one of the last nice things of what this does is we can use the as Excel and the hyphen show switches, and it will execute that code and actually create an Excel workbook. And then each one of those code blocks, the results will be on a separate sheet. And we can take a look at it. So here you even see it creates the sheet with the, the data from the get process command and it sets it up as a filtered uh, table that gets colorized and it's actually, you can subset it such as, which I just want to see the Microsoft processes or just show me the ones that are blank. Get that right. Click it correctly. Things like that. So I encourage you to go off and do an install module PowerShell notebook. It'll install it for you. Go grab yourself the Azure Data Studio and you can actually off to the races using uh, MDBs or I'm sorry, demo markdown files or any kind of markdown file you want to create and then start converting those into Python or PowerShell notebooks, uh, Python on the brain. And you can play with this and see uh, what you think. So check this out on my GitHub repo. Comments, pull requests are absolutely welcome. Find me on Twitter and have a good day. Thanks.